Alright, in this video we're ready to put the final piece of the puzzle in place in order to get our A star algorithm fully functional. And that is the heuristic calculation. And this is going to be represented, of course, by H score inside of our uh, field notation. Now the purpose of H score is to give a kind of balance between looking at things from a cost standpoint to looking at things from an advantage standpoint. And what I mean by advantage standpoint is in the sense of a more greedy algorithm, the idea is that we would make a selection of where to go based on how much closer to the goal this node would get us. So rather than counting cost, we could simply say which node is closest to the goal and choose that node. Now, of course, that would result in what's known as a best first search, and that has some of its own drawbacks. The advantage to A star is the fact that it nicely balances a heuristic or a greedy algorithm with something that is more uh, predictable and more optimal, like Dijkstra's algorithm. We get a nice balance between the two, where we get some of the efficiency of a greedy search and the optimum path resolution of Dijkstra's algorithm. Now, to get started, what we're going to do is we are first going to build a method that will allow us to run the H score, the heuristic calculation, and then we're going to employ that calculation in the score assignment of our nodes. So to begin with, we're going to go all the way, let's see, just below our comparison method, and we will assemble a method called getHScore. This is going to be a static method. It will return a floating point value, and it is, of course, called getHScore. We're going to format the, this method signature to make it similar to distance. Since the other cost we're addressing is the distance between two vectors, we'll use H score to calculate the heuristic score between two vectors. So we're going to take in two vector two parameters. The first one we'll simply call vector A, and the second vector two parameter will be vector B. Then to run the calculation, in our case, the heuristic we'll use is the simple Euclidean distance between two nodes. That is just the act of taking the two nodes and calculating their distance. This will, uh, of course, allow us to calculate diagonals as being more expensive than straight up and down verticals. But of course, this is just implied because of the nature of things laid out in a grid and the distances between any given nodes. Another thing to note about this method of using uh, this form of distance is it is admissible which means that A star in this case will always return optimal paths. Now, of course, that gets into an interesting sub-discussion about admissible versus inadmissible in our heuristics, where, of course, an inadmissible heuristic is going to have the possibility that it might overestimate the distance and therefore come up with a slightly suboptimal path. And it's in the, in, in the standpoint of gaming, that's not necessarily a bad thing. It will only be slightly suboptimal. But in our case, we're going to go with the admissible heuristic of Euclidean distance simply because it is very easy to calculate. And again, going back to the strategy with these videos, we want everything to be very straightforward and easy to read. Since seeing a heuristic in place, whether it's admissible or not, is going to allow us to successfully implement A star. So to put this in place, we can simply gather and return the distance between the two vectors. So we will return vector two dot distance between vectors vector A and vector B. So now that we have a method for calculating the H score, let's employ that down here inside of the continue method. If we scroll down, we see we have our neighbor analysis loop. And inside of this loop, we have the section where we are adding the node to the open list and, of course, setting its various scores. I'm going to jump in right below the G score assignment and we will assign H score. So we will say that our neighbor's H score is going to be equal to get H score, where we will pass in the neighbor's position and the goal's position. So we'll pass in neighbor.position and goal.position. So you can see this is where you can almost look at it from the advantage standpoint. Since we're going to go and navigate from our current, uh, basically the, uh, the neighbor's own position to goal, meaning that a node that's closer to the goal is going to get chosen before various other nodes. 
So we can see how all of this is going to go together and work. But before we actually show this in place, I just wanted to show this being put together so we can get everything assembled. Now I'm going to momentarily comment out this line so that we can continue testing from a last standpoint. If you remember last time, we had been testing in short distances back and forth, and we saw roughly the number of nodes that got explored. Let's put together a new test scenario so we can check our old method against our new method. So at this moment in time, we are calculating, or rather we have the ability to calculate the heuristic, but we are not employing it on our nodes. We can verify that by watching the H score as we advance node to node. But the example problem is getting from this side of the open gap to the other side. So let's hit P and begin exploring nodes. You can see that we continue to explore outwards from this central node, though since we can't explore directly across, we're forced to explore more and more nodes out to the side. Even as we get past the open gap, we still go back and check some of these past nodes. Because for every unit we go farther this way, we still have to search units backwards since we're searching equally in all directions. So you can see that before we get across the gap, we have explored all of the nodes on this half of the grid. Then we finally begin exploring the nodes on the right half of the grid until we explore enough to find the goal. Once the goal is found, we find a path that connects back through, and that finishes off our search. But notice the number of nodes that get searched. You saw that we had finished searching all of the nodes on the left side of the grid before searching any of the nodes on the right, and even then we search out to the sides. So in this case, even though we found a good path between these nodes, it took a lot of searching to find that path. Now let's put the heuristic into play. Let's uncomment this line, putting the H score in place using our get H score calculation. Let's rerun and select two nodes on either side of the gap and begin calculating nodes. So we'll hit P to begin and then hit spacebar to start walking through nodes. And you can see that the uh, H score is lighting up for each of these nodes. You'll also notice that we've searched all three of these nodes on the right edge before searching the other ones. If we look at the scores, we can see why. The node directly to the right had the lowest score of 320. Of course, since A, it's, very, it's one of the shortest to walk to just by cost, and it's also the most direct route to the goal. We, of course, ran into a wall and couldn't keep exploring in that direction, but the next two most interesting nodes were above and below that, with scores of 366. The nodes above and below and to the left have higher scores because they're further away from the goal, and that's going to give them a much larger H score, and that's going to actually count against them when we sort the list. So now if we continue exploring, you can see that before we can reach the top and bottom of the gap, the distance traveled to that is 453 units, so some of the nodes still close to our start are less expensive even with the heuristic, so they still get explored first. But you can see once we've explored the two nodes above and below the start, the next node is the node above the gap. And after that, because the node from the gap and back in has the same cost as the node at the top, and it just happened to get sorted out first, we're now on our way to the goal. And the path to the goal itself is also 453, since the heuristic on that one is zero since it's at the goal. So of course the next thing we're going to select is the route to the goal. Once again, it happened to sort before the other one. So if our sorting hadn't worked quite that well for us, we would have at least explored this node, and possibly this node before reaching the goal. Even if we had done that though, even if we had explored both the bottom and the top routes, that's a lot less than completely filling this side of the grid. Because you'll notice, compared to our earlier test, we have very few nodes searched. As a matter of fact, we only have four nodes on the close list that weren't actually part of the resulting path. And then looking at all the nodes on the open list, we did check a few on the left side, but we never even looked at these nodes on the edge, much less added them to the closed list. So we have greatly enhanced the efficiency of our search algorithm. So with that now, we have H, H score fully in place, so that means we are now running a fully qualified A star implementation. And having seen it work, we can see that we are definitely we definitely gain a great savings in the computational cost in assembling a path. So with this, we now have H score, we now have A star itself working, and that's going to bring this video to a close.